Welcome to Sick Beggar's YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today, we got the soft tail back up on the lift. And now, maybe you watched our videos in the past, maybe you haven't, but we started this soft tail about a year and a half ago, and it was kind of, you know, parts were really super hard to get, so it kind of got pushed onto the back burner. Now that that's all kind of getting over with and we're able to get more parts in, we've got it back up on the lift. Today, I'm going to be actually replacing the wheels that we already put on this bike about seven or eight months ago. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these wheels. It's from a different company, but it's just not the wheels that I wanted. And there's one other thing that I want to address from that video, and that is the rear wheel. Now, when I ordered the wheels for the soft tail, for some reason, I went with a 21 front, which is what I wanted, but I went with an 18 in the rear. Come to find out, it's not a great idea, especially if you're riding two up. Now, this is a Cholo Vicla build, which you see majority of them or a solo rider, but this one's going to be built for two up. With the 18 in the rear, leaves very, very, very little clearance between the sides of the tires and the fender and actually the top of the tire and the top of the fender. And we haven't even done the air ride yet. So that's something that we plan on doing in the future to this build is the air ride. Now, a few videos back, we changed the color of our street glide using all Advan black parts. We changed it from charcoal pearl over to Zephyr Blue. Absolutely love the bike. And then I needed new wheels for it. So I jumped on Sinister's website and I found a set that I'd always wanted. I did a complete install video on that. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check out those wheels. Now on the soft tail back here, I wanted to change it up. I did want to address that 18-16 issue. Now these wheels that are going on the bike are from Sinister as well. So I'll be walking you through how to take the wheels off, put them back on the bike, how to set your belt tension and set up your rear axle and all that stuff. We'll go through all that step by step and I'll show you how to do it. Now I did go with a fat spoke wheel from Sinister as well, but one other thing that I changed is I just went from plain fat spokes to a diamond cut fat spoke. And these diamond cut wheels are just going to set that thing off. Now when we did these wheels back here, I also put a Harley Davidson chrome cover over the pulley. When I did my order through Sinister, I went ahead and got a full chrome pulley from them that matches the spoke. So from Sinister, I got the 21 inch front wheel with a 21 three by five tire on the front, white wall of course. And on the rear, we got the 16 inch with the 16 five five with white walls as well. And then of course we got the matching pulley and then we got the matching rotors front and rear. During this video, I'll be showing you how to set your axles with this tool. And I'll be showing you how to set your belt tension with this tool. Both of these tools are relatively cheap and both of these can be picked up on Amazon. And as always, I'll have the links down in the description down below. You can click it, take you straight over to Amazon to these exact two parts that I have here. The torque specs that I throw up during this video are going to be for this 2015. It may not be the same for yours. So make sure that you get a service, not an owner's manual, that's different. Get a service manual and I'll have all of the torque specs that you need in that service manual. Now I grabbed the wheel from Sinister and got it up here so you can see it a little bit better. This is the front wheel, it's the 21. We're running to 120, 70, 21 on this. And as you can see, this is the all chrome hub and it has high polished stainless steel diamond cut spokes in it. If I flip it around here, you can see the matching rotor already installed from Sinister and it already has the bearings pressed in both sides for ABS. My bike has ABS. So that's another thing that you wanna look out for when you get onto the website to order your wheels and tires. Make sure that you select whether or not your bike has ABS or non ABS because that makes a difference in the bearings. Sinister has a ton of wheels on their website. Like I said, check out the wheel video that we did on the Street Glide. Absolutely love those. Tons of compliments on them already. Those wheels are sick. They got the bad boy collection. They've got spoke wheels. They've got fat tire wheels over there too. So if you got fat tires, you can look at those. They have matching pulleys. They have matching air cleaner. They got several matching parts that match those wheels. And one other important thing I want to mention too, is this entire wheel is made right here in the United States. And I'm not talking about getting imported over here and then put together by people in the United States. The entire wheel is made in the United States. Now I'm super excited to get these wheels on. Let's start on the front of the bike. Let's get the easy one out of the way. Then we'll work to the back. So the first thing we need to do is get these brake calipers off. This is going to be a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. Once you look inside that socket right there, you can see that that is not a standard socket. Most of the socket sets that are on the market that are, you know, halfway decent have a set, a full set of 12 point sockets in there. You just have to have a 10 millimeter one to get the uh, brake calipers off. So we're just going to go in here, take these off. So once we get that bracket off there, you'll see the wire goes on down to the spacer. And we're basically just gonna back this rotor off just like this. We're gonna take our non Harley Davidson compliant caliper bags and we're gonna wrap that over that. If you don't have these, 
just get a towel, wrap it around it, whatever. You don't, it's very important that you put something around it. You don't want it back here banging on your fender. And more importantly, while you have this off, never squeeze your brake. These calipers have a point where you can push them too far closed and you can't get them back open again. And the only way to fix it is to rebuild them. So we're gonna take a 15 16 and a ratchet, breaker bar, whatever you have. And this is on there with quite a bit of torque. So you can use a wrench like this, or if you have a breaker bar to add to this, even better. But we're just gonna put the wrench on this and break that thing loose. Now there's two different ways you can go about doing this next part. Now ours has an aftermarket fender on the front, so we don't have the light up here. Some of the soft tail models have the light up here on the fender. You'll have to follow that back. That wire goes back and goes up here underneath your gas tank. You just lift up and disconnect that if you want to take the fender off. Um, if you can get the front end of the bike up high enough, you don't need to take the fender off. You can just simply get the front end of the bike up high and roll the wheel out. Now to make it easier to get the axle out, I'd let the jack down till the tire just touches the lift. If you're doing this on the ground, same thing. Let the jack down to the tire just touches the ground that is going to take a lot of the uh, motorcycle weight off that axle and make that axle come out a lot easier now on this side of the bike you've got two bolts that run up in the bottom like this and this piece here that can come off remember that you have spacers in here if you're taking a stock wheel off you're going to have spacers on the inside and when you're pulling that wheel off those may fall down it's okay i have replaced mine with chrome spacers from harley davidson i'll try to find the part number to these and put them in the description down below with abs one of them is a spacer this side's a spacer the other side is like a chrome cap that goes over your abs spacer you can't replace that abs spacer so we just cover it up with chrome and get these two bolts loose if you look at the bottom side of this this says out on it so when we put this back on you want to make sure that the out is out here out away from the wheel now from this side i can take a rubber mallet like this and start popping that out on over on this side i can pull that axle out there's our axle we're going to go ahead and take ours off it's just as easy to pull these four bolts as this is a jacket up and worry about your bike sliding back I'll go ahead and pull one side, hold it, reach around, pull out this side, I'm trying not to scratch the paint on the fender. We don't want the tire to come off just yet, but we do want that fender off there. Now we can roll that wheel forward, take it off the lift. So like I said, these brake discs or rotors, whatever you want to call them, were installed on the wheel when we got them from Sinister. Now, maybe you're installing your own, and if you are, there's a couple of things worth mentioning. Rotor bolts are a one-time use only. When you put them in and you put them down to torque, if you take them back out, toss them in the bin, use them somewhere else, but don't reuse them in rotors. When you're putting them in, blue thread locker. We use Loctite 243 on just about everything on a Harley Davidson, except for when it specifically calls for a red. These will be torqued down to 16 to 24 foot pounds. So before I put this on the bike, this is an excellent time to protect your wheel with whatever flavor of protectant you prefer. It's easier to do it out here on the table than it is to do it on the bike. Now, before you put your axle back in, make sure to wipe this down clean. Get yourself some anti-seize. This stuff I picked up on Amazon, I think it's called VersaChem Anti-Seize, and this is copper. It doesn't matter what flavor you use, just make sure to Put a smooth, thin coat of anti-seize back on your axle before you put it back on the bike. So remember to put your spacer on. So we're going to roll this into place, put this through, put our spacer in there. Go ahead and push that through the wheel. So this ABS spacer has to go in here a certain way, and I'll show you how to set that in a second. But for now, I just want to get that axle through the spacer and get it through the uh, forks here. On this side, we have that where it's marked out, so we make sure that is facing away from the bike. And for right now, I'm just gonna run these in by hand. You don't, you don't wanna tighten this up yet. You just want them in there. Now bear with me for just a second when I take you off the tripod. See this little nipple right here on this ABS bearing? That has to butt up against that piece of metal on your fork. 
So when you tighten this up, this has to be moved all the way up, and it'll bottom out. You'll hear it bottom out. That has to be pushed all the way up, and then you tighten it down. So we're gonna go ahead and put our washer on, put our nut on. And we can go ahead and take our dead blow or rubber mallet and go ahead and knock that the rest of the way through. Now when you're tightening this back up, you've got this hole right here in this axle. That's to keep the axle from spinning while you're tightening the other side. Take a Phillips screwdriver like this or big flathead, whatever, that fits down in that hole. If you're not putting axle nut covers on to cover up those holes, make sure that you have this pointed straight up and down. If you have it like this or slightly at an angle, it can cause a really bad whistle noise when you're going down the road. So the axle is gonna get torqued 70 to 75 foot pounds. Remember, before you tighten this, Push that all the way up. You'll hold the left side with a screwdriver and torque this down. Set your front fender back into place. Go ahead and get all your bolts and nuts on here. Going to pull our brake caliper back into place. We're going to separate our brake pads. Gonna slide this over the disc. We're gonna take our ABS sensor to make sure that we put that back over those two holes. And we're gonna to torque these 28 to 38 foot pounds. So the first thing we need to do on removing the rear wheel is remove this retainer clip. You can just use a flathead screwdriver and kind of pop this up just like that. So we're gonna put our 36 millimeter on there. It's got a lot of torque on this rear axle, so you may have to use like another wrench or something to put use as a prying tool. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the rear that we did with the front. We're gonna use our jack. And as you can see, we've got the wheel off the ground. So we're gonna lower that down until that just touches and lets a little bit of pressure off that axle. Now we're gonna remove the rear caliper and you can follow this line back right here. And there's a little clip down here on your frame that holds your brake line. You're gonna go ahead and pop that brake line. Then you've got a bolt here and a bolt here to remove the caliper. It's gonna be a Torx 40. Now we can pull this caliper back. Slide it off. The smaller line here is your ABS sensor. We got a zip tie on that, so we're gonna go ahead and cut that. And once again, we'll just stick it in our bag to keep her from banging on anything. I'm gonna go ahead and take the nut and the washer off. And if you look down here at your spacer, this spacer has the lines on it, goes to the outside. So when this axle, so when this spacer falls out, make sure to remember which way that was facing when you go to put it back in. At this point, I'm gonna grab my rubber mallet again and knock that axle out. If it's too tight, go ahead and mess with your jack a little bit. You want it just barely touching to take that weight off there. Now it's important to note how all of this look. Your brake caliper bracket right here has some rubber on it and it slides onto this metal piece here on your frame. And it comes back, it actually goes around the axle. Your axle goes through that, it's actually part of the spacer. And then you have your ABS sensor down here. We can go ahead and pull this out. Now on the wheel speed sensor, ABS part of this, you've got that little tab. So make sure that that's pointed out. Just make a mental note of how that goes back in there. Now these bolts, one on each side, is used to set your axle, your rear axle, to make sure it's not crooked like this and also set your belt tension. So they have to be equally pushed back to not only keep your axle straight, but get them in the right position to have the right belt deflection on your belt. But if you're at the point where you've actually already unscrewed these, after we get the new wheel on, I'll show you how to set them and then also set your belt deflection. Or we have a spacer in here, we're gonna pull it out and I'm gonna go ahead and slide this forward. So I'm gonna show you how to do this and avoid having to unscrew these to get your belt off the other side. So we've left plenty of room now on this side because we've got all of our spacers out. So we should be able to come in here, right, and pull this up and over. Now your spacer on this side is away from this tension bolt, right? So we can push that over. We can slide that spacer out just like that. And then we can push this forward. So before we take this belt off, we're gonna take this top belt guard off. You've got a bolt here and a bolt here. We're gonna remove the lower belt guard. Got a bolt down here and a bolt up in here. Now we can slide this one out. 
Now we've got everything where we can roll this forward and get this belt off without loosening these. So without removing these, now when we put it back together, we know our axle will be straight and true and it'll have the proper belt tension on it as well. So just a couple of different ways that you can do that. So I've got that belt off now. Go ahead and use my wheel dropout plate that's on this lift and just kind of roll it up on the fender. I pull this guy out of the way, let her drop down. Like I said, we got the matching rear belt sprocket that's gonna go on here. And depending on your year and model, your pulley may need a spacer. We got a spacer like this that's gonna go on here, and then we put the pulley on, and that's gonna push that pulley away from the wheel just a little bit. Now I pre-fit this. When I put this on the pulley, it sets right in there just fine. And when I set it on here, it's a little bit tight. So I'm gonna line up the holes the best that I can. And in order to pull this down equally, I'm gonna go ahead and keep put a couple of bolts in it. And this is gonna keep me from when I'm pushing this down on here, keep this from spinning away from my holes. This will keep it lined up. Tap this down. Set it in place. Blue locks high. Now when your torque it needs, there's two sets of torques you have to do on this. And make sure you do it in a star pattern. Our first set is gonna to be torqued to 60 foot pounds. Your second set is gonna be 77 to 83 foot pounds. So I took a couple minutes and threw the old spacer on the buffing wheel real quick. And that thing was looking pretty rough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sneak this one back in. Remember, lines to the outside. You kind of want to get to the rear of the bike with that spacer in there. Make sure that you can get your wheel straight under the bike. Now, all of this here takes a little bit of finessing. We get everything in place. So we've got our brake caliper bracket back in place. We're going to take our wheel speed sensor, turn it this way with the nub facing out. We're gonna put it through here. Make sure this wire goes in between the frame and the brake caliper bracket. We're gonna let that drop down there. We want that in here. Take our spacer, put it back in here. This is what this uh, adjustment bolt pushes on. We can take our wheel speed sensor, bring it back up, and we're gonna put it right up against the wheel. Make sure to clean your rear axle off real good and recoat it with some anti-seize just like we did on the front. I'm gonna visually get down here and look to see if everything lines up. Our brake caliper thing needs to go back just a little farther. We're pretty close. You can usually kind of just jimmy the axle around a little bit. And we can get that started. But I'm gonna knock it through the wheel at least. Now I've knocked the axle through where it's hitting this spacer right here because it's not quite lined up. So I'll have to kind of pull and push on the wheel a little bit until I get that to line up. Make sure to check that your bolt is pushing on your spacer, that your spacer is not behind it or the bolt's in front of it, whatever. Make sure that this bolt is pushing on this spacer and vice versa on the other side. The wheel speed sensor has a little nub on it. We want to make sure that when we tighten that up, it's pushed all the way up and butted up against that frame. So there's two ways to check your belt deflection according to the service manual for this bike. It's going to be on the ground, on the jippy stand, or upright with the back wheel off the ground. So that's how we have it right now. You can already tell by feel that this is too loose. Now remember, these adjuster bolts right here on both sides pull on that rear axle that tighten this. But if we make a major adjustment here and we don't make one on the other side, 
is all it's doing is pushing this side of the axle back and it's leaving this one forward. So that's where you get the crookedness in your rear axle, which makes your tire track wrong going down the road, which is going to wear out your rear tire. So it's kind of a give and take on both sides. It's a push and pull situation. So we want to move the axle back equally on both sides and tighten this belt. So what we want to do is tighten this axle nut down just a little bit. So just enough when we make an adjustment on both sides, it's actually loose enough to push the axle back, but it'll hold there as well. So it's about 20 foot pounds of pressure usually is what you can get away with. So if you got a ratcheting wrench like this, it makes this super easy to do. And I'm going to give this a couple of turns on this side. I'm going to go over here and give it a couple of turns on this side. And watch that axle move back. So just by feeling, by doing hundreds of these, that's probably about dead on, but we are gonna double check that with the belt tension tool here in just a second. First thing I wanna do is make sure that I adjusted those bolts in the rear equally. And that's where this alignment tool comes in. And you can pick this up on Amazon. They're pretty cheap, I think about 10 bucks, but there's a couple of different ways you can do this. These tools haven't been around forever. And actually we just used to make these out of coat hangers and little rubber bands, or you could use a coat hanger and a marker, a couple of different ways. You can also use the uh, pencil pen string technique where you take two pins and put a string in between them, tie them off, and then coil up the pin until it meets the point and then hold that and put it on the other side and check it. You can use a tape measure. You can use whatever you want to do. These things just make it really simple because it has this little brass thing on here that you can unscrew and slide up and down. So you have to pick a point that's equal on both sides of the bike. And right now we're gonna use this bolt right here with our exhaust. It may be a little bit hard to get to. So we're just gonna put it down there. We're gonna put that in the center of that bolt. We're gonna pull this back and we're gonna put that in the center of that axle and then screw it down. Kind of the same thing on this side. We're just gonna flip it around and put it through here. We know it goes to the center of this. You put that in the center of that cap and you roll that up and you can see that it hits dead nuts in the center. So before we get too crazy and tighten up our rear axle, we wanna check our belt deflection. Each one of these marks on here is an eighth of an inch. Service manual tells us with the bike upright, back tire off the ground, we need 5 16 to 3 8 deflection. We're gonna set it at 3 8 deflection because it's just easier to see 3 8 on this tool. You got a rubber band at the bottom. This is spring loaded. You got a rubber band at the top. We're gonna push our rubber band at the bottom all the way up. You can see on the silver part here, it says 10 pounds and it has a mark all the way around it. You're gonna set this rubber band to a visual point on the bike. We're gonna use the bottom of the swing arm right here, this plate that goes across here. So when I set this up here on the belt with no pressure on it, I'm gonna set that O-ring to that plate because I can visually see that this ring is even with that plate. Now you have to look at both things kinda at the same time. When you're pushing up on this, spring loaded, when it hits 10 pounds, you're gonna go past this end is going to go past the frame and up because you're pushing on the belt so you count the marks so when i hit 10 pounds on this we count down here we should be on that third mark right there i'm going to put it on the belt we can visually see that it's right there on the frame i'm going to push up one two three four so we're at about four so this could actually go just a little bit tighter we want three we get our wrench, we make our adjustment again. Maybe just one turn on each side. So we're gonna set this back up in here, right on the belt. We wanna make sure this is not hitting anything else. Make sure it's just on the belt. You go right here, make sure this is even. Make sure the rubber band at the bottom is pushed all the way up. We're gonna push up one, two, three we're at the 10 pound mark you can see the rubber band drop down to the 10 and we were three lines down so we're that's our belt tension you're going to torque this to 95 to 100 foot pounds now once you get that torque make sure to put your retaining clip back on we're going to come over here we're going to sneak our brake caliper back on you're going to torque these two bolts at 16 to 20 foot pounds don't forget to put your brake lines and your wheel speed sensor back up in that clip. And we're gonna push that back down. 
so that doesn't come out. Now from here, I would normally just put my belt guards back on, but I'm gonna take a minute to uh, clean up my belt guards, get them all shined back up, and then we'll get them put back on the bike. But after that, after you get your belt guards back on, your little caps, if you have them back here in the back, any of your chrome accents, go ahead and put that stuff back on the bike. And right from there, you're done. So there you have it. Like I said, super easy install and I love the way that this turned out. We went from that 18 inch rear wheel back to the 16 inch stock rear wheel and that gave us a ton more room inside that fender well. Now, I do get a lot of questions going to a 21, especially on a soft tail because it's quite a big jump and I get a lot of questions about does it make the bike ride different? Now you're not going to feel any difference just going straight down the road. Where you're going to feel the difference is in those corners. When you rode a bike for any good period of time, your brain just kind of develops this muscle memory. It's things that you don't even think about when you're riding your motorcycle. When you change something like the size of your front wheel and you have that little extra push going into the corner because you got that bigger front wheel on there, you just have to make that adjustment. You gotta slow down just a little bit more or lean just a little bit harder to get through that corner. <clears throat> it's not one of those situations that you're not gonna be able to control. You're not gonna hit that first corner and just go flying off the road. It's just a little bit of difference, but you'll figure it out. So in conclusion, I absolutely love the way these things look. Those diamond cut spokes on there is just really going to grab that sunlight and just make this bike pop. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video if it helped you, and tell your friends about us. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that that you want to address, leave it in the comment section down below. I try to check YouTube every day and comment back to everyone that comments on our channel. I'm going to get out of here and get myself back to work. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe keep your knees in the breeze thanks for checking out the video don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe popping up over here and don't forget to check out the rest of the channel because we have a ton of bagger related and soft tail videos on our channel and to get you started maybe you can check out this one or this one not really going to say anything else you can just click one of those and take it over to another video